Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sunday Night Beyond the Court with Scotty Mack. I'm Sudsy. This is Ellie. You know, we love having you here on a Sunday night. We, we like to pick a different time. Um, we like to pick a different day. We just feel that this is a good way to end your week. So before we get started, first off, you know, we appreciate you being here. Scotty Mack is here for a reason also, because we are about to show you something super cool that we're really excited about. You know, we've been working really hard on this. So take a look at this video, share this feed, and we'll be right back to talk about this. All right, so everybody, that's the exciting news. We're so happy. You know, Scotty Mack and I and Veronica, we worked really hard on this. Ellie, you know, you had a backstage uh, pass to this and, and you saw that we were developing this app. So anyway, that's my yep. app. The Sudsy app is now available. It's available on Android. It's available for Apple devices. And at the end of the day, I hope everybody downloads it and, and really enjoys it. And it's, it's a way to connect racquetball. You know, first I'll say congrats to both of you for getting this uh, underway. I know you've been working hard at this and uh, here it is. It's ready to be released. Uh, congrats to Vero. I'm sure she's behind the scenes doing some work as well. Uh, Julius, as you know, Julius and I downloaded it early on and gave you a little feedback. And I know Julius was into it and watching all of the videos. So, you know, so the first question for you on this app is, uh, you know, why, why now? And what does it uh, kind of encompass? Yeah. So, you know, with, with, a lot of people were talking about like, you know, what do we do during COVID and what do we learn about ourselves? And, you know, one of the first things I learned is Scotty Mack's an amazing human. You know, Ellie, we, we started doing this stay home battle and Scotty Mack was one of the first people that reached out when he saw that I wanted to do this. And I did not have an official ref. And he said, tell me, is there something I could do to help? I want to be involved. And I'm like, well, first off, you know, I can't compensate you, right? I can't pay you. This is racquetball. Don't forget. And I said, you know, what do you want to do? And he kind of just came in and, and he stepped up and he said, I'll, I'll be the official ref. And as you know, now, you know, he was a huge part of the scheduling and, you know, the app was something I've been talking about for years with Veronica. Veronica and I have said, you know, racquetball needs an app, you know, and there's no app, right? Like app is everything. Everything's now at our fingertips. So how can we do that? How can we connect the entire racquetball world, the racquetball friends, family, the players, you know, the community, the sponsors, the coaches, the organizations, you know, and our vision was to make a one-stop shop at your fingertips for everything and anything racquetball. We did a good job of that. I mean, to, to, to your credit, you've involved a lot of different groups within this app, direct links to other organizations, uh, clothing companies, that are involved in the sport, you know, why involve so many different groups and, and even some groups that, you know, might think that they're competition with you or with the show or, 
you know, just a, a little bit unsure about that connection. Why, why are you involved in so many in racquetball? You know, because, because racquetball, you know, we're one big family and I'm not competing, Ellie. You know, I do what I do. And at the end of the day, you know, one of the reasons I know, and I'm going to let Scotty touch on this, is I just want racquetball to succeed. And, you know, if, if another clothing company is doing well or another coach is doing well or an organization is doing well, I'm one of those guys, that, you know, that's fortunate enough to, that I'm going to be okay also. And at the end of the day, I, that's what I'm here for. I'm here for just like you, you know, we've been, you and I have been in this sport our entire lives. And, you know, whatever I can do to make it, you know, get exposure, have people see it, have it at their fingertips, um, make it easier for them to be engaged, right? And, and be motivated. You know, that's what I'm going to do. And, and, and Scotty Mack played a huge role in that. And when I explained to him my vision that this wasn't a, it's called Sudsy, right? Like, so if you want to download it, it's called the Sudsy app, but it includes everybody. I didn't, we didn't leave anybody out and it's still a work in progress, Ellie. And if there's anybody that feels they need to be part of it, you know, just reach out to me, reach out to Scott, reach out to Veronica, reach out to you, John, you know, Ellie, you'll, you'll tell us like, Hey, there's a coach in, you know, wherever that wants to be in the app and we'll do the best we can to include them. You know, we're not being paid by any advertisers, you know, no clothing companies are paying us. Obviously I'm associated with, with various brands, just like you are, just like Scotty is, you know, but at the end of the day, it's, it is, it's for racquetball. Scotty, thoughts on that since, you know, you're, you're coming from a little different perspective than being Sudzy Munchik. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm from a, like a software background. So I, I like completely get the, the shift from like the, the way I see it is we had like a very separated like world of racquetball. We had like people have individual pages. It's not very connected. Um, so the, like the reason I like I'm most interested in sharing this is like, it's a way to bring all of the apps together. It's a way to bring everyone's social medias together. Um, in addition to the, what, what says provides in terms of, uh, of coaching, uh, educational videos and that sort of thing. So it's kind of a mixture of those, of those two, uh, th th those two things. Like, I, I think there's a lot of value in being able to like uh, see everyone's social media in the same place. Uh, you don't have to know who the top person is and search for them yourself. You can see them on your phone. Um, I think that convenience like pays a lot. So you talk, you mentioned the the instruction part of it. What you know, there's I'll get to the exclusive part of it, but just the free part of the app, Sudzy. Uh, what can we see on some of the video that you have there in, in terms of instruction? Yeah, so in one of the things in the app are free video tips. And, you know, they're, they're going to be short. They'll be maybe three to six minutes. And it's going to be, you know, just little specific things that maybe you can, hopefully you can use the end user, no matter what level you are, to, to help you get better. Uh, just interesting, intriguing, cool little video tips that, you know, hopefully will eventually maybe drive you to the exclusive section. Maybe you'll be interested in working together possibly in, in you know, in coaching, but it's also, there's some fun stuff too. You know, Ellie, like I said, you know, you have access, you've seen them uh, and, and we'll be adding content all the time, you know? So to keep everybody engaged, I'm going to be constantly, Scotty and I and Veronica will be working to add constant content, not only to the free video tip section, but what you touched on the exclusive section as well. Touch on that just a little bit more. You know, somebody says, you know, I definitely want to connect to Sudsy, whether they have you coaching them or just providing instruction, or they just want to support you and be a part of the pay in exclusive section. Uh, what type of service are they going to get from you? What type of connection? Yeah. So, you know, on, on, in the exclusive section, uh, those are much more intimate videos. Those are, you know, anywhere from 10 minutes to 20 minute long videos. There are specific topics, which I don't want to get into now, but if you actually go to the app and you go to exclusive, there's an about exclusive video that you can watch what, what it's all about. But, you know, that's, it's, it's really affordable. You know, it's something that I wanted to offer at, at a fair price. You know, Scotty and I and Veronica went over it and, and we all felt that, you know, and others like yourself that, you know, for what you're getting at the price you're paying, you know, it's well worth it. And then if that turns into something, it's a generalized kind of exclusive video. So if you want something more specific for you, your level, your specific goals, well, then that's when we could work privately together. And I, you know, speaking from experience uh, of receiving texts from you on some of these, what videos that might be in part of the exclusive, 
you know, you're really specific with some of your execution drills. Uh, you know, what, you know, when, when, when players see you practicing, you know, what type of mentality do you bring to the practice that you want to roll over to, to a player that's getting involved with the exclusive? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, one of the things with the mentality is I always want you to do something with an agenda, with a purpose. There's always a reason, you know, I was talking to one of my, one of the players I work with today from Florida who wants to be a national champion in his age group. Uh, and he's been a silver medalist. So I, I say that, you know, you have to put yourself in that position and visualize, you know, the moment you could visualize the, the, the plate, where you are, what you're trying to accomplish, you know, but everything is unique to each individual player. Like I don't like to generalize it. And it's, it's something that, you know, I take a lot of pride in, like, I don't, you know, any title I've ever won now, I like to put that into whoever I'm coaching or whoever I'm working with, you know, I'm also a certified life coach, which I don't think you knew that Ellie, but so I'm not only trying to make you better on the court, but I want to make you better off the court as well. And, you know, if you're going to commit to me, I'm going to commit to you and, you know, I'm sure together we can do great things. And, you know, the app is again, just another way you can download it. It's at your fingertips. It's free to download. So you can download the app for free. And then if you want to take part and check out the exclusive section, or if you want to work privately together, you know, that's, that's up to you. It depends on your goals, right? So I always ask three questions, Ellie. I say, what are your goals? What's your life availability and your financial situation? And financial situation doesn't mean I need to see your bank account, not, not, not by any means, but it means, you know, like you get what you pay for. And if you're interested and you want to work together, let's, let's go for it. Do you want to give the price for that exclusivity to get on the uh, exclusive portion of the app here? Yeah, Scott, why don't you touch on some of that? Yeah, so it's uh, it's 10 bucks a month. Uh, I think it's 99 or 100 for a year. Um, and the, the goal there is like new videos are going to be added constantly. So it's going to be a, a continuous value. Um, if you want to see some topic covered that's not covered at this point, um, if you're a, a subscriber, you can message that and we can include that in a future um in a future video. Uh, but the idea is to, to be actually giving the things that people care about. Like my, my perception of what's going on with the world of racquetball is like, there's a lot of videos that like talk in generalities and talk like, Oh, like you just gotta like think harder. You just gotta work harder. Uh, and you'll, you'll, you know, you, uh, you'll do better. Like it's, it's just like vague and like, doesn't really drill into the real topics that we care about as racquetball players. Um, so my goal with, with, with this, and like the reason I, I wanted to be involved, uh, was to get deeper, was to get to like, what's the real thing that people want to hear about? What's the, what, like, what are the tips that like, I, I would need to go to Sudsy for, I, I would need to go to someone for, to like, to hear the, like, how does this apply to me? Guys, you know, one of the things that's going to happen inevitably, and I'll, I'm sure I'll even receive questions from my local people that I'm, that I'm around in racquetball, but. They're going to want to see actual game footage from Sudsy's past or even present at, since you're still playing high level racquetball, you know, and we'll get into where we think you're maybe ranked here in one of our shows coming down the line here in the U.S. So not not where we think, where you think I'm <laughs> rated. I'm not getting into that. Right, right. Well put. But, you know, they're going to want to see some old videos. For example, you and Jason in the quarterfinals of the U.S. Open is one of those matches that everybody just goes to with the crazy rallies. Anything with you and Cliff in finals. Uh, is fun to watch. So are we going to be able to see some actual footage from you in your in your prime? Yeah, for sure. So one of the things that, you know, again, Scotty and Veronica are super into that as well. What what one of the things I'll offer in the exclusive section is I will do some video analysis exclusively about specific matches. So to your point, mm. there may be a match of me and Cliff, me and Ellie, me and you, John, me and Jason. And I'll talk about that match, you know, in one of the apps, but it'll be exclusive to the exclusive members. And, you know, we'll talk about mindsets and where are we at, why I did this, why I didn't do that, why I won, why I lost, you know, what did I see in Ellie at the moment? Why did Cliff, you know, want to choke the referee at the, at the moment? But, you know, Scott, yourself, Veronica, all different levels, you know, has so much input into this. It's not, you know, the bottom line is this, that we created this app to connect racquetball. We created the app for, for racquetball so that everybody that loves and cares about racquetball has it at your fingertips, okay? You don't have to work with me exclusively. You don't have to download the exclusive videos. You really don't. I would love you to, but that's not what it was created for. You know, to Scott's point, 
It was to bring everything to one place and we're still working on it and we're constantly trying to make it better. You know, we could go on social media, right? And, and go to uh, a Facebook page. We can go to Keep Racquetball Great. We can go to, you know, uh, Peak Racquetball. We can go to IRT, LPRT, USA Racquetball, Japanese Racquetball Federation. But now we put it on our app and you can go to it and it's all right there, which is pretty cool. And the other thing that's important, you know, was very important to me, Ellie, and I'm sure it touches a chord with you too and, and our guest that's coming up. I wanted to be able to give these guys and ladies as much exposure as possible as well. Right. So the more that they're available and the more people can see them, hey, the better for our sport. And again, we're not being paid. You know, yes, we I'll make money if you sign up for exclusive or if I coach you privately. That's it. Absolutely. man. It sounds like uh, exciting times for you, too. And, and you specifically, Sudzi, uh, looks like you're going to be having more work coming to you here very soon. I know you look forward to that. So I wish you the best on this. And I know I'll be involved along the way. And and uh, look forward to watching it grow for you. Yeah, we, we definitely will. There's a lot of work. I couldn't have done it without Scotty Mack. I couldn't have done it without Veronica. You know, we're, we're constantly doing it. Um, you know, and Ellie, I appreciate your feedback. There's there's some others too that obviously partake in this and, and even your son, you know, a junior, Julius, you know, he had access to it and I love the feedback. You know, whether it's good or bad, I'm not afraid of it. You know, we, we, we want that. Scotty, can you, you know, can you touch on that? Like, we want to hear that, whether it's technical, whether it's content, whatever it may be, this app will constantly be updated. We're going to constantly give free tips and we're going to always, of course, give more exclusive tips right now, you know, full transparency. The plan is we're going to pretty much release two to three exclusive videos every month. Is that accurate, Scott? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm holding y'all to the fire. I'm holding y'all account accountable. It's like, but one of my values with this is like, I, I want like continuous stuff happening, stuff happening with it. I want it to like continue building, continue growing. Uh, I don't want it to be like, push it out. Let's see what happens. Wait a month and it gets really old. I want it to like constant new stuff. I want it to be uh, more like an experience to have it. Um, that, that was one of my, my interests with it. Like my perception is like a lot of racquetball stuff is like, it's kind of stuck in like the nineties in a lot of ways. Like, I, I work in software professionally. That's that's my my work. Um, so I, I want to like bring us more into the present. Have more things mobile. Have more things like in your hands, so you don't have to like, oh, you have to view it on a browser. It's not going to work otherwise. Um, I, I I want things things to work well. I want new content. Um, yeah, yeah. So before you go into your monologue, you know, one of the last comments here, David Anastasia, our friend from Mississippi, talking about. Purchase exclusive, play like Sudzy Monchik. No, David, not quite. It doesn't work quite like that. You start to think like Sudzy, hopefully, is the goal. And from there, with, with work, you know, you're going to play like yourself with, with a professional like Sudzy's, hopefully his, uh, his voice in your ear a little bit and in your mind to, to uh, make your decision-making even better, make your execution even better. But, um, you know, I know, speaking for Sudzy here, he put a lot of work in as a young man, as a young kid through his – teenage years into a professional and it doesn't just happen like that um it's it is you know having played him a whole bunch of times on the court it's it's uh it's really impressive and really you know you know you're playing one of the greatest players of all time and at that moment and so um i know you're joking a little bit but uh but you know you gotta you, you really gotta take really to heart what he's what he's trying to get you to mentally think about and decision making on the racquetball court that's going to be the huge thing for people to take from this so good comment david funny Sudzy, yeah, back to you thanks ellie you know at the end of the day i hope everybody watching please go to it's available on apple it's available uh at the google play you know it is just search Sudzy, and you can download the app it's racquetball it's for free so we really would appreciate it scott mcclellan my wife veronica and i we've worked super hard on it you know and ellie i know go ahead you got something to say yeah i mean I everyone's on. gonna want to know like where's the nickname Sudzy come from we'll probably do this a couple times i'll ask <laughs> this i'll ask this numerous times on this show just so people who are new to the show will hear about it but Sudzy, where did it come from because i know that's not your legal name you know what, Ellie, and we did not set this up, but that is going to be a free video tip that we will, Scotty, when could we upload that? I will do that exact reasoning. And you know what? Download it now. I got one better for you. The first 15 people that download, Scott, I hope that you're okay with this. 
download the exclusive section for the annual membership. I'm going to give you a free one hour private clinic, virtual clinic like this, all right? We're gonna get in, the 15 of us. I'm probably gonna drag John Ellis in, he's gonna have no choice, but the first 15 of you, and Scotty McClellan's gonna keep track, yep. that download for the annual exclusive membership are going to be invited to a private, unique Zoom clinic, and we're gonna just do racquetball stuff just like this, but it won't be public. It'll just be for you. So go download part of that. We would love to have you. It'll be fun. Ellie, you're in and you don't even know it. So we got to get moving here because, you know, I appreciate all the love and support. Please download it. Get back to us. Tell us what you think. And uh, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be a good time. So let's get to our show. Scotty, thank you. I know you're going to bounce out and we're going to get started. And then we're going to bring in our amazing guest. Yep. But all right. Thank you, Scott. Thank you as always, buddy. All right. So before we get to tonight's guest, I just want to say a few things, you know, and this is important to me. We are all racquetball, no matter what level you play, what city, state, or country you represent. If you play for head, if you play for gearbox, Kenex, E-Force, or anyone else, it shouldn't matter. If your intentions are good and always put racquetball and put our sport first, your family, you're our family, you're John Ellis's family, you're my family, you're Scotty Max, you're Veronica's family. You know, you're your favorite player's family. You're, you're your friend's family at the club because racquetball is, we're a big family. And, you know, racquetball has and always will be part of my life and it's always going to be in my life. You know, even when I walked away to focus on other things, racquetball was always there. It was, you know, whether it was my friends, whether it was guys like John or, you know, Cliff Swain or Adam Carp, you know, Jason Menino is a brother to me, right? But it was always there and it was always part of my daily routine. And today I'm doing everything I can to help our sport and to make sure that, you know, it survives and thrives. And with friends and family like Ellie, John Ellis and Scotty Mack, my wife, Veronica, you know, my business partner and friend, Shane DeWitt, you know, and many, many others, you know, we're going to make sure we're going to do everything we can to make sure racquetball goes on and goes on strong. You know, it just so happens I released this app and, and you can look for yourself. You know, we're including everybody. Everybody's involved. I haven't left out one coach. And if there's a coach you want to add, we're going to put them in. If there's a clothing company you want to add, we're going to put them in. You know, this is important too, though. When I'm not on the court personally, we're not competing. When we're on the court, we're competing. But when I'm on the court, we're on the same team. You know, we're on the team of racquetball. And if we can all work together, we are friends and we are family. And together, we are racquetball. You know, and that's up to you. It's up to me. But, like, look in the mirror. And, and what do you really want out of this? Is it for the sport or is it for your own benefit? I want the sport to do well. I'm not going to lie. I'm one of the very few people in the world that if racquetball does well and it survives and it thrives, I'll be okay. So for me, the first thing that matters is the sport. I come second, and that I promise. If the sport does well, I'll be okay. I'm lucky enough and fortunate enough to have the best relationships I've ever had in life through racquetball. My wife, who I can't explain how much I love her, the best of friends I have, the relationships I'm developing, you know, and now it's time to meet, you know, another family member, mi hermano, my brother, but we're going to take a one minute break and then we're going to bring him in because he deserves his own show and he's going to have his own show. So we'll be right back.
you're bowing out. Scotty Mack left us, you know, and I, and I just went through our entire little monologue, which I know Ellie loves. And I talked about friends and family and this guy right here, Alvaro Beltran, who I don't call Alvaro anymore. His name is Alvi. All right. He is mi hermano. And if you don't know him, you need to pay attention. He did text me. He broke his phone. So nobody judge him for yeah. what we see right there. Okay. Um, but he will fix it. So Alvi, I'm going to get right to it. You know, first off, Alvi, we, we speak often. We speak all the time. So, yeah. you know, I'm not going to get too intimate about our conversations, our private conversations, yeah. but I'm just going to now, now I'm going to be a fan. Okay. So if you get emotional, that's okay. Cause Ellie and I can get emotional too, but you know, Alvi, you revolutionized the sport. You're, you're, you're Mexican, you know, and <laughs> you, you put, you put the sport on the map for Latinos worldwide. And, you know, when you first came up, you and I are friends over 20 years. Um, you know, over that, more than that, closer to 25. I don't want to say too long because if I keep going, then I'm closer to my wife's age and we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> so, you know, you really did, Alvi. When Mexico was coming along, you were the guy that John Ellis and myself and Cliff Swain and Jason Menino said, this guy's good. You know, he's going to change the sport. And when we saw Mexico coming, it was because of Alvaro Beltran. So Alvi, tell us a little bit about how you got started you know, how old you were, when you got involved. And then after we get through that boring stuff, we'll get into yeah. the fun stuff that, you know, people really want to hear. Well, yeah, well, it's very, uh, uh, it's interesting what you're saying, because uh, once, when I started the, uh, playing the tour, I was already about 21. Rocky was, we're the same age. Probably, he looks older, but we're the same age. <laughs> <laughs> But he was already, he played for about six years already, the tour, you know? <laughs> my, my um, the way I started playing the tour was very different than any other kids uh, playing right now from Mexico. Like, every, all the kids, they know that they, they, there's a, uh, goes to, uh, the, we're number, like, Mexico right now is number one. We were not back in the days. I, I remember, uh, playing tournament, uh, the, the best players from Mexico were Alvaro Maldonado. Um, uh, Juan Corvedo. Uh, yes, yeah, Ripi Quevedo, uh, all those guys. But all those guys saw you as gods, as, as superstars. And and me too. I, I appreciate what, I mean, for me, you and, and Sats were amazing athletes. But, but I always knew I, I could play against you I, I remember driving to a tournament I was uh, my first I played one tournament in Vegas that was my first pro step I went to a pro nationals the, that amazing club that they had and it was all of you I didn't even like I, I was a kid uh, from Tijuana I didn't cross the border that much so I didn't know about the pro tour like the guys from El Paso and, and Chihuahua were used to the to Greg Peck, Dave Peck, and all the guys from Texas. I didn't know anyone, so probably that helped me. I wasn't like Star Truck, uh, Star uh, Struck, Star Struck, or? Star Struck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but um, but I, I mean, it was a different level for sure. But I wasn't, I mean, I was impressed. But I, but I knew I could, like, like if I if I if I uh, uh, put myself into it like a hundred percent. I was I was gonna be able to play and compete. Sometimes win, sometimes lose, but I was gonna be there. And these guys were like, when they saw you guys, it was to take pictures. <laughs> I <laughs> played with pro, and like they were happy to be in the court. I wanted to compete and, and beat you. And and I think that, that that was a different mentality. I started, uh, like I said, one time I uh, I drove with Alvaro Maldonado to that tournament. I wasn't supposed to go. He was the one that, that that told me like, hey, you should go, you should go and play and try to play with the with these guys. But they're like, they're like sick, they're crazy good. He was like scaring me about you, <laughs> about you guys. So that was his mentality, you know. And and I think I changed that. I I, I 
I changed that for the for the next generation that that if you if you get your your mind set in the right way and and you're not scared of losing or winning because I, people are, are scared of winning too and and not only losing or and and I think I I, I did make that uh, that change for for the new generation of racquetball players that actually hurt me because now almost everyone is tr uh, beating me. <laughs> well, Alvaro, uh, to say something about that real quickly, and we'll get to that a little bit later on, but you know, you're nearing 40, if not 40 already. So if these 20, 42 or 41, 41, 41. yeah, that's I what happens. You're not age. sure. Exactly. I'm to a point that I forget my age. Right. Exactly. And if some 20 year olds are beating you every now and then, you know, no shame in that. There's a lot of great players coming from Mexico. You know, there's great players that we don't even know about in the United States that are now coming from Mexico that just yeah. aren't at the, the top cream of the crop that we get to see, whether it's pro tour or, or junior world. So I realized that, you know, a couple, a couple of uh, guys coming to mind in Munoz and Bustillos also were kind yeah. of in between uh, hippie and, and uh, Maldonado. Yeah. And, and speaking about Maldonado and hippie, you would have never known that they were starstruck because they were just such great guys to be around mm -hmm. off the court that yes. um, they battled hard. They played hard. You know, maybe their skill set wasn't quite there. Um, and, and I'll get to that in a second. But Munoz and Bustillos kind of closed the gap a little bit more, especially mm -hmm. Nacho. I mean, he was a great player, tough, tough out in a round of 32, round of 16s. But when you got when you came aboard, you know, it was obvious that your skill set right off the bat was incredible. So. You know, as you're growing up in racquetball, Mexico, really, how how were you able to really work on getting as good as you were right off the bat? Well, uh, I I never really like I said, um, I started playing because my dad, like most of of, of uh, the guys before, like in our generation, because our dads play, yeah. and. Uh, it wasn't uh, it wasn't my plan to play the tour. It was like one step to another. Like uh, I just had fun. Then then I started beating people and in, in my club. And then I won states. But at a young age, I, my expectations were never to be national champion because because I never saw a, um, um, a tournament before. So hmm. once we had our nationals, I never played juniors, uh, to put it that way. Never. But at 17, I won the Mexican nationals, the open division. Right. So I could have played the juniors, and um, so it it was it wasn't meant to be, but it was meant to be. Right. The tour, same thing. I mean, I, I was in a point where I wasn't doing good at school, and I wasn't doing good at racquetball. I was seven. Uh, about 2021 when I was going to college and I'm like uh, I don't I don't want an office job I'm like I'm gonna, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna go for it I'm gonna play the, the world championship in that time Nacho Bustillos was uh, sponsored by Adidas remember mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so I I heard a story about uh, whoever was the world champion um, uh, he was gonna be signed uh, with a full sponsorship for a year. And mm -hmm. I'm like, this is my chance. Before that, I don't think they even, uh, me a Mexican player or a Latino player never made the semifinals in the world championship. Right. So uh, I started uh, training my butt off. Actually, Tim Doyle was a big part of it. Uh, like you said, who, who kind of like uh, taught you uh, how to play the game? Uh, Tim Doyle. Uh, Coach Jim Winterton also helped me. He was a coach back in the days. Nice. My favorite Modelo. beer. <laughs> My favorite beer. Oh, yeah. Very good. And, um, Alvi, yeah. who are you kidding? We know you like all beers. <laughs> uh, cold beer. <laughs> <laughs> Any cold beer. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, uh, Tim Doyle, I, 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 I play. Actually, he was like five. He retired. I think he retired for a while and then got back on tour. And he was like number five or four again in, in those in 2000. I don't know if you correct me if I'm wrong. I Who knows at like this point? Four. He was like number five or number four in 2000. He, um, so I started playing with him and I, I learned so much from him. And we played three times a week. Imagine it's like going to a pro stop 
Yeah. Every every uh, every three th every for yeah. me when I had uh, I hadn't I haven't uh, I had no no experience playing the pros. I got to play with a pro, a top five pro, uh, pro three times a week for for about two or three months, and he taught me about discipline and. Like the first day, I was late. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had to drive like an hour from Tijuana to uh, San Diego, uh, uh, U University of San Diego, and I was like like half an hour. And he's <laughs> like, and he's like, "Hey, you can't do this here, fucker. <laughs> like this is the last time you're late. If you're five minutes late, get the fuck. He's like, get the uh, fuck out. <laughs> like don't. <laughs> There's All right, time, Alvin. No, no, we, I, I want to get, I want to get a little serious now. And, 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 and this is, you know, you, you said it before you're 41, but really like 30, right? Like, you know, <laughs> yes. you know, with, with what's going on with COVID and, and you and I speak often, what do you think about the future? I mean, there's no doubt, you know, Ellie's going to do a show about the best players today in the world, but you know, so age doesn't really always matter and it really doesn't, you know, how do you see your future moving forward, you know, as a professional racquetball player? Like, how has this yeah. affected whatever decisions yeah. you, you have a gorgeous daughter, you know, who I love to see, you know, <laughs> like, what, what are the plans? Like, what are you thinking about moving forward? You know what? It's crazy. I, I ask myself that every morning <laughs> 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 to be serious. I, I mean, this, this is uh, something we never experienced before, but racquetball has. Pro racquetball has pro racquetball has been in really uh, low uh, stages, and the, the the thing I think uh, racquetball will survive. Pro racquetball will survive, but the the what it sucks is that we were going in a, in the right way. We were starting to have uh, uh, more tournaments and having doubles too, and that's one thing we didn't have before. The doubles was making it exciting for. A lot of people everywhere, so uh, that's the only thing that that, that it's sad. Uh, no. We were in a in a in a good uh, rhythm, but I think uh, racquetball will survive. Pro racquetball, uh, we were in a bad spot. You you guys remember like we switched uh, commissioners and and actually that was my first or second year on tour, and there wasn't any there wasn't a, a tour back in the days and, and and we made it happen and it survived and i think it's going to happen the same thing um it's uh it's sad i mean it's sad for every everyone in the world right now but um we'll be okay we'll be okay uh i think uh we all the the people that love the sport we have to do extra to to keep the the, the sport alive and growing like uh, i i've seen your videos john and uh you're uh I'm, I'm really happy that you're back into the the sport again we all have we, we all needed a time off like because it's uh some you give you give it your all for for so many years and you need a break satsi had that too and now he's back and and i'm glad to see you guys uh uh like uh very energetic and putting all your your knowledge and and your um, energy again to the sport that has given us so much you know yeah thank you Al appreciate that yeah. alvi you know you you're 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 part of that crew you know you you've been there for so long you've been through four different changes in the in the IRT you know commissioners yeah. from Hank Marcus Dave Negretti yeah. you yeah. know Jason Manero Jason, and John Scott and now, and, that, and now your current crew really five you know yeah so you know i know you're playing a lot of outdoor and pickleball mm -hmm. you know and we talk about it there's to me there's no question and ellie you're a pickleball pro, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, there you go. What are you talking about? Could oh, you, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, could you see yourself playing, like, going that route or, or, or doing both? Like, what? Yeah, well, I see myself, I see anybody playing pickleball, man. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Yes. I, I, I tell everyone, I think it's easier than ping pong. A yeah. lot easier than ping pong. I think so, too. Anybody can play. Uh, I mean, it's like anything else. It's about all the details and putting extra time if you want to be the best. But anybody can play pickleball and be good at it. 
uh, it's the only difference is how good you want to be. If you want to be in the top, you want to be the best, you put extra time, put extra uh, money to invest on, on, on your knowledge and whatever you want to. But uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's pretty easy to do the, the transition from racquetball because of the risk and us being aggressive and the reaction. It's, it's, it's pretty easy. I mean, I'm not in love with pickleball yet. I like playing because uh, we don't, we, I can't play any racquetball, indoor racquetball. But, um, but yeah, I see a, a transition. I'll never, I will never leave racquetball. Uh, like I said, I, I think I, I, I owe to, that to the sport. I think I, I, um, it, it's my passion. It's, my, it's a lifestyle uh, racquetball for me. And, and that's what keeps me going, still playing. I know I'm not the same player I was in my in my uh, 30s, but I, I like the competition. I, I I just I just love the challenge, man. It's so cool that you're playing still. That both you and Rocky, and a lot of people are are going to connect you and Rocky. I know you guys have roomed together for so many years yeah. as well, and so that's just a great connection that you have. Um, you know, you mentioned you mentioned your way into the sport, winning the nationals, the the Mexican nationals at the open level at 17. So my first time hearing about hearing your name was from Adam Carp when he played a tournament either in Tijuana or somewhere maybe yes. in San Diego. I think it was Tijuana. And he and he I think he beat you but barely. And he said, I, I don't know, he's 18 or 19 and he's just great. And and no, that was no, the first time. I, no, I, I, actually it was um in Rosarito. Adam okay. Carp, Jason Menino, and Mike Gore went and played the tournament. They they thought it was gonna be like uh our We'll split the money, have fun, drink some tacos, and then I <laughs> and then and then I I, I was like uh, fifteen back in the day. Fifteen, wow. Yeah, I was fifteen, and and yes, I played with, and it was like a tiebreaker. Yeah, I don't know if it was a round robin because I think I played Jason also, and I went like tiebreaker with both of them, and Jason was like a, he was in the top uh, four as well. And uh, Jason was the, well, the first. Uh, he, he he told me, yeah, "Oh no, you're gonna be um, you, you're gonna be playing the tour uh, soon." I didn't have an idea about. I didn't know anything about the tour back. Jason, in the day, but, Jason, but Jason Menino told you that. Yes, I was 15. Wow. I'll tell you 15. what, Sudzi. Adam. I mean, I remember the conversation distinctly. Yeah. Adam came home. Uh, we were living in uh, Orange County, and and he came back and he said, "This kid Alvaro Beltran is really good." His, his, his skills are exceptional and he's going to be a pro and he's going to beat people. Yeah. And so that leads to my question. Like, who was your first big win over a USA player? Uh, Rocky. <laughs> Rocky. <laughs> How fitting. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, Rocky was the, the junior national champion, the, the, the new kid on the block. He, like I said, he was 17 and playing the tour, I think. I mean, you guys would. Pretty much. 17, 18. Yeah. Yeah. He but was I mean, yeah, so uh, he was my my first big win. Um, who else? In San Diego, we had a league, a, a really good league back um, when, uh, at 16, 17. Uh, Joey Paraiso played there, um, Aaron Ambry. So those guys were solid, uh, solid open open players, and um, those were kind of like my first. Uh, my, my my first good wins. I remember uh, actually Aaron. I see him a lot here playing. We play paddle a lot, and he's like, "Yeah, I remember when I played you. Uh, you were 15, and and you beat me." And I'm like, "This is time to retire for me." <laughs> <laughs> he told me that. Sure, it's sure. When I find out uh, it's, it's about time for me to retire. But, All uh, right, Alvy. Th there's a lot of questions coming in, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I, I, there really are. You're see. That's the thing. This is what's cool, right? Like, you've transcended the sport because you, unlike a lot of players from other countries, you have a ton of gringo fans. Like, you yes. have a ton. You <laughs> yes. do. You have a ton yes. of American fans, yes. and part of that is is your association with Gearbox, and we'll get into that. Yes. But I yes. wanna. I just wanna recognize some of your fans real quick. Okay. Um, all right, number one from Marcelo. What would you say is an important career result that you've had? The, my, my life changer was a world championships 2000. Nobody, I don't think a Mexican made 
the quarterfinals before I won the tournament. I beat oh, Kane. Wow. I beat Rocky. I beat Kane. I beat, uh, like, wow. And it was, uh, we had, I think, uh, uh, I don't know if it was two or three players from each country. So I had to beat the two U.S. players. I beat uh, the the two um, Canadian players. I had to beat uh, Fabian Balmori. That in the time he was sure, the best, of course, he, he was the the best Latino player. So yeah. I had to play him in the round of 32, something like that. And oh, then I played, I think, Hiroshi in the in the 64s. And then I he's, played. He's still playing. Yeah, he's still playing. I know. I think he's gonna outlast me. We're like we're uh, in a race. Uh, <laughs> whoever, it's a competition. He, he's <laughs> much older. Yeah, he, no, that's true. Ma, ma's my own. <laughs> yes. So, but, so but, all right. That 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 was my life changer. Like I had to win the tournament, or I was out of racquetball. I was. How old were you? Was, how old were? How old? I was were you? 20, 21. 20. Okay. What do you mean? And, and, I, that? And, and like and like I said. Before me, I don't think any Mexican made the quarterfinals before that in a singles. Uh, and, and you, uh, and I and won you the won the, and you I won did. the, yeah, that you, you know, you took, you took it to a different level. So, all right, next question. So I, maybe this is the same. This is from Eduardo. What's your best memory? And by the way, before you answer that, because we have a lot of memories together off the Rack court. Ball. Rack, uh, these are, the court. these are memories yeah. on the court. Hey, I'm smart. I know. We're married. <laughs> <laughs> um, best memory. Best memory. Uh, I have many. One I one worst memory is the Panam game <laughs> that you were there with me. <laughs> but uh best memory, you know what? Those are hard to uh to remember. I, losses stick to me. Wins doesn't. And that's probably the reason why I keep playing. I I went. I just want to keep beating the young guys, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, losses stick to me more than 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 the than winning. That's why you know that that right there. You saying that's one reason why all of the veterans, when you got on tour, loved you right off the bat. You could you could feel that that the wins weren't a huge moment for you. That they were just another moment, and that the losses bother you. For example. You would tell me after every loss to me, I'm going to get you next time. And we kind of would say that in our speeches yeah. to eat, yeah. to the crowds after you got this one, I get the next one. And But yeah. we meant it too. That was, you know, the loss hurts right then and there. And you got to speak about it and then you move on. Um, yeah. you, you know, at this stage, and you're, we're talking about your age a little bit now at 41, but what are you working on to improve at this stage? Is it possible to improve your game right now from where you are right now? Uh I wish I had this knowledge when I was 20, you know? Yeah, sure. But, but um, no, it's just staying healthy, man. It's Stay my healthy. main. Uh, I remember uh, at 33, 34, I started <laughs> having injury after injury. Um, my back, my ankle, uh, knees. knees. But I, I wanted to keep playing as a young, as a young uh, explosive player. I, I had to... Like, it, I, I didn't, I had to learn it by, by sticking my head in the fire. Like, I, I hope, I, I wish I had a coach and told me like, hey, you got to take it easy and yeah. you'll be all right. I find out with time that I had to uh, do it slower to not react so explosive. And that's why I look like an old man now playing. I mean, I know I can do like I can go harder, but I, I might get injured, and it's not worth it, you know. So I think it's the 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 main thing I've changed, uh, and I, I start listening to my body, to myself more. And but but racquetball wise, I I think uh, that's that that's my age over all, all the kids right now. They don't have uh, your mind. My, my my racquetball encyclopedia. It's uh, twice as big as uh, as them. You know? Alvi, yeah, Alvi, let, let me let me talk on that. Even though you're about four years older than me, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, that's that's not true. Um, <laughs> no, it isn't. you know what? It, what is it? You know, when when you get on the court now, I know that you believe you can beat everybody and anybody. Yeah. You know, physically, I know that you know maybe you don't have the same strength as a patata mm -hmm. or a conrado mm -hmm. or 
But why is it that you think your success continues? What is it about you, your experience, and your abilities that, you know, like I said this to Veronica the other day, we were talking. And first off, she's a big fan. She says, we talk all the time. And she's like, you know, obviously Paola is maybe the most famous from a notoriety standpoint ever. But Veronica agrees that Alvaro Beltran is the biggest racquetball player, you know, to ever come out of Mexico or or the Latino community. So, you. you know, what is it? Like, I'll never bet against you. That's what I said yeah. to her. Yeah. And she's, yeah. she understood that. But why is that? Why is it that I feel that it, way? And I know you feel that way too. Plus, racquetball is a mental game. If you know how to get to the other guy, somehow you make him feel comfortable, comfortable or, make him, or make him feel uncomfortable. Uh, one, it takes one word or it takes uh, one shot. Uh, you look for their weakness. You look for their weakness. Uh, sometimes t- talking nice to them, that, that will be a, a, a form of uh, uh, attack, you know, In, not a form of uh, being uh, uh, soft. Soft, yeah. So uh, I, I think uh, I, I do that as good as anybody. Um, and, and you, and something knows he, he always uh, texts me after matches like, I know what we're doing. Yeah. I know. And, and other people don't see it, but, but I see it. I, I'm going to talk about one, one time I was playing so bad. And I, I, was, gonna, uh, I was playing Ben, Ben Croft. All of a sudden, he, he, uh, he uh, dies and, and goes like this. And I tell him, hey, you hurt yourself, huh? <laughs> nothing happened to him right. he, so he skipped like the next ball <laughs> and he's like I'm like yeah I think it, it hurt and he's like yeah I did like I, I, I was like he wasn't even hurt but since he skipped that shot that was a way for him to say like yes I got hurt uh, in that uh, last rally and then he started playing terrible like he wanted to prove me that he was really hurt. He wasn't mm-hmm. skipping shots because of, of, uh, of, of just playing bad. And I beat him, and I was playing terrible, man. Uh, things like that, I think, uh, that have helped me <laughs> in my, uh, in my um, wins, you know. So, Alvi, you know, something that mo- maybe a lot of people that follow you know and understand, but some don't, and that is that you've had incredible outdoor success. You've beaten Rocky in singles. You've beaten him in doubles. And that says a lot right there because the guy lives on yeah. the outdoor courts. Yeah. And so you're yeah. one of the greatest outdoor players of all time, and that maybe doesn't get enough credit for that. Uh, you know, what – two question, two-part question. How, how does your game differ in the outdoor game, and what are you thinking about in those changes to be a good outdoor player – and then also, and the big question is, should outdoor racquetball be a part of the IRT Tier 1 schedule? Yes, I think so. Uh, outdoor racquetball is fun, especially in these times. Yeah. Um, it would be incredible. Doubles, for sure. Doubles uh, for sure. be uh, – it's a, a lot of fun to watch. I'm a fan. I, I mean, if indoor or outdoor doubles, is, I'm, I'm a fan of the I – can, I can watch almost any, any match in, in doubles. But uh, yes. Uh, the, the, so how do you the change? How do you change your game for for outdoor? You know, what do you do specifically to make changes to be to play outdoor style? I just I don't know who told me, but just hit aim for the middle of the court, hard as you can, and and that will open the door. It's hard to do the transition from indoor. We always want to kill the ball. And, and that's very easy for all the outdoor players, guys like uh, Mike Peters and, and all those guys that I love to love. Yeah. They, they, uh, they live off, off, off those uh, like indoor players. So I think just change your, your mentality, not being as a, offensive, just being uh, playing not to screw. That's one thing. Like in outdoor, it's not about killing the ball. It's about who makes less mistakes. Yep. So just keep it in play. It's a, it's more, it's more work. If you put it that way, it's more work, but uh, that's how you get to the points. I think uh, 
Go I think ahead, it's, it, it, it's that. It's, it's just not making mistakes, not forcing shots, just uh, playing, uh, I mean, hard and, and, and safe. And the yeah. other guy is going to make the mistake. You mentioned, you mentioned uh, uh, Mike Peters. And, you know, a, a lot of indoor people don't have a clue who that is. But yeah. you and I consider him yeah. probably one of the greatest outdoor doubles players of yeah. all time. So, yeah. you know, why mention him? Because that's who I talk to about outdoor style as well. If you yeah. want to learn how to play outdoor, talk to Mike Peters. Well, because I, I won the title with, with Mike that's Peters. right. Uh, you guys yeah. did win it. We, we actually beat a... a yeah, but what a, haven't you won in, in doubles? <laughs> but yeah, that was the first time I won. Uh, we beat uh, Cliff and Jason wow. in the finals. So uh, that's a I don't tough care win. what you beat. I don't care what you beat them in. That's a good win. That's yes, a great win. It is. Actually, they don't mention it. They say they never lost, but they lost to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. You can remind him next time you talk to uh, Jason. Uh, I'll say, I'll say, Al Alvi, I, I want to ask you this. You know, let's talk about the present day. So, yeah. you know, we talk a lot like if, if people say, oh, Sudsy, if you get back on the court, you know, I'm like, well, you know, if I was going to call a coach today, you know, like Jason jumps out at me. He's one of the yeah. first people. John is like, yeah. I told Ellie, he's all over me about going to play full time. And I'm like, all right, you're going to come coach me at every event. <laughs> you know, not just because it would not just because it would be fun, but because of their knowledge. And yeah. I always tell you that if I was any kid in Mexico or in Latin America or anywhere that maybe I don't speak English or anywhere, I don't care if you're in the United States, you know, like you're one of the first people I would think of. And we talk about this. We talk about coaching. Do you have any desire or what's your, what's your plan on coaching? Like you'd be a phenomenal coach. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, I'll be involved with racquetball. I don't know if it's going to be coaching or, or uh, helping some other way, but I'll, I'll be involved with the sport. Um, do you work with any, do you work with any of the phenomenal yeah. juniors in Mexico? Right now with, with Sebastian Fernandez, uh, we uh, he's, he's the I mean he's somebody that I see as a future yeah. number one player, yeah. tour yeah. winner, and a lot of stops in his future. Yeah. Tell tell yeah. us, tell us about tell us about Sebastian. Yeah. Uh, John, actually, I told Sati he he should be the one coaching uh, Patata. He uh, he he he's so so explosive, like uh, uh, almost a, 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 a Sati. Uh, um uh, nobody like like Satsi or you I think you guys were the most explosive guys I ever saw and uh but Patata is right uh, it's almost right there he's young but he's so strong and explosive and and he wants to change his game to what he's not you know and I think if he if he understands if he listens to what his style is and he just like buys it I think he, he can be like a, uh, uh, for sure a contender to the number one spot. And I Absolutely. think a guy like Satsi or, or you, John, uh, would be great for him because you guys have the style, that explosive, powerful, uh, do dominating from point one to, to the end, you know? And he's somebody I, that's going to be really interesting to see in, you know, six to yeah. 10 years where he's at at 25 to 29, yeah. because his body's that of a, of a 28, 29 year old yeah. in their prime already. His yeah. mind is sharp and he's competitive. He does not smile in photos, which is something <laughs> I actually love about the kids. Yeah. So, um, you know, you, you seem like the perfect mentor for him because you know, every style of game out there. And uh, yeah. we look forward to seeing how he does in the future. For yeah. Sure. No, he, 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 he for sure is going to be uh, fun to watch him. He'll be there for ten the next 10 years. So, Sadie, I'm going to go here real quick. You know, you've had support from E-Force early in your career and now Gearbox at the beginning of Gearbox as well. You were there with Rafa and the family to, to yeah. go forward. You know, talk a little bit about the support you've received because to play for as long as you have and receive that type of support, it's very uncommon in the sport. And so talk yes. a little bit about the connection to, the, to, to Gearbox now at this stage and – um, and, and also, you know, any other support that you get that allows you to actually pay to get on the road because it's expensive to travel mm -hmm. as much as you do. Yeah, so I'm very fortunate, uh, very grateful to, to the relationship I, I had all, 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 uh, over the years with, with Raphael. Actually, the reason why I signed with uh, E-Force 
back in the days is because he was part of uh, he worked for E Force and and he he's the one that gave me my first uh, sponsorship. We were really good friends since uh, since I was like 13, 14. Uh, I used to hang out with him all the time uh, in this house, and I was the the annoying kid he couldn't like get uh, get rid of. So uh, it's still it's and turned still, out well though, and he still can't get rid of me. And uh, and and yes, um, I mean, I, I, I was talking to Satsi about that about uh, my best decisions. I made him drunk, and. Um, <laughs> After he, after, after he, he, um, he uh, started his own company. We talk about uh, me uh, going, uh, going to uh, Gearbox, and he said, you know, he said, you know what? I can't afford you right now. Uh, so I was gonna sign, sign with Pro Canix, and uh, I, I had a kind of like a good deal with uh, with Mike in those days because I, I was in the, I was like number. Three, uh, I was doing really good. It was, it was a good moment. In the, that, that was when I made like eight or nine finals, I think, one year. Mm-hmm. When we had sixteen tournaments, remember? Mm-hmm. I think well, one one year. So I, I had a good deal, and and then I go to. For, I was gonna sign on Monday, so Rafa tells me no, I can't afford you. So go with Procanix for a couple of years, then then if I'm solid, I'll uh, we'll, we'll I'm sign you. And so I get drunk and I'm like, you know, what? <laughs> I, I, I'm in the middle Saturday night. I'm like 2 a.m. driving to my house. And I'm like, you know what? If I sign with Pro Kenick, I'm going to try to get rough, like, li- like limit his sales in Mexico. And, and probably in two years, he won't be uh, around. Maybe yes, maybe not. But I'm going to compete against a guy that I want to be with in the future. I'm like, Rafa, I call him that time. He's like, what are, what, what, what are you calling me for? I'm like, I'm going to sign with you. I don't know how much money you got. Wow. Uh, give me this and, uh, and let's do it. Let's start from zero. And that's what, that's what happened. And the best decision I ever made, man, that's why I'm, I'm still here. Uh, uh, we, uh, we, we started from zero. We, we started in his garage and, and I started with a demo racket without a glove and without any, anything. So uh, I bet on, uh, on the, I, I had the right card. Alvi, what's your favorite thing about racquetball? What has racquetball brought to you in life? Oh, many things, man. Many things. Uh, uh, it's uh, the, the friendships you, you uh, make. It's it's uh, priceless. I mean, you're in Ecuador. How how a kid from Tijuana, a kid uh, a kid from New York, uh, John in California, Javier in Chihuahua, like became so uh, so good of a friends. You know, um, that that's the biggest thing. The the friendship, um, the traveling, uh, getting to know other cultures, um, represent representing my country is. The, the best thing that ever happened to me playing uh, the tour was nice and, and, and it was a way of living but uh, wearing the, 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 the Mexico shirt jersey it's uh, it's an honor for me so so those things uh, it, it's, uh, has uh, shaped my life has uh, done everything for me like I said r- racquetball is not a sport it's my it's a lifestyle you know for us. Speaking about your time with Team Mexico and all the competitions you've been involved in, you know, you just mentioned that that's where it's at for you. That's the yes. most exciting moments. You know, now Mexico is expected to win alongside Bolivia ahead of U.S. most every every competition. So how do you keep, you know, how does Team Mexico keep the foot on the pedal and, and wanting to continue to be the top spot when, you know, I remember when it obviously something I remember when Mexico was making semis, maybe quarterfinals, yeah. maybe, and then. And then that was it. But now expect, expectations are there in the whole country. So what is it that, what's the special secret for Mexico? Well, well, right now, Bolivia is making the things interesting for Mexico. For sure. So, uh, so I think, uh, I mean, like I said, like w- what we have, not, not liking to lose, not uh, loving to be uh, 
uh, loving to win and, and to the love for, for, for representing your country and, and be the best you can be, uh, winning medals. Um, when I started playing, my, my first tournament I, I signed in my club, Club Hipodromo in Tijuana. I, I want to say hi to Arturo Martin. You probably know him. One of my and favorites. Pancho Martin. Yeah. Uh, they, they brought the Nationals. I was about nine, and we had that National Tournament. The club was packed. That's when I knew I want to win this tournament. I want to be a national champion because the people were hanging out of the side of the of the court, all over the court. I, it was incredible, and that that had an impact for me. So once I uh, I won nationals by first or or made the, the Mexican team in uh, uh, in '96, I think World Championships in Phoenix. That was my first international mm -hmm. event. And that's when I said, too, I was 16, and I said, I want to win this tournament. I, I think I saw Sherman Greenfield. I think he was the one that won that tournament. I'm not sure because I was playing with the other kids, the, <laughs> the little brothers of players. I right. was like, I was hanging out with uh, in the basketball court and stuff like that. I wasn't even watching the finals, but, but I remember I wanted to win that tournament, so... I, think, I was I was there at that tournament. Uh, you were there, just, just watching. Watch? I, I was yeah. done as a as a team player, but I came back. I pretty much came back to watch the matches and go to the bar that was connected to the club there and have <laughs> yeah. some fun. I was sixteen. I couldn't even uh, get a beer, but <laughs> but it was the finals, right? It's a lie. Uh, Sherman and uh, Ruben, I think. I believe so. I don't. Ruben doesn't stand out, but I remember seeing Sherman there. But maybe it was Ruben. You know, again, I was kind of floating around that place, yeah. uh, just enjoying <laughs> enjoying everybody and all yeah. the. You know, yeah, when you yeah. when you go back and you're not competing at that, you have even better conversations oh, than when oh, you yeah, are competing. So, sure. yeah, there's there's a lot of amazing guys uh, in the international environment. Absolutely, we absolutely. miss you too. We miss you in those events. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> I do too. I miss him as well. Yeah, just just want to say real quick hello to Keith Miner, huge supporter. You know, big sponsor. Yeah. Um, he signed Love on it. Keith. Keith in Chicago, always doing so much for, for racquetball worldwide and making, you know, our lives better. Alvi, yeah. Ellie, myself, thank you, Keith, for everything you do and continue to do. Alvi, so, you know, questions in the box and messages. Everybody wants to hear about the the um, match with Kane, where you're just most uh -huh. recently won. Tell us about that. You know, um, what is it, you know, go ahead. Okay. Uh, first of all, probably Kane hates it because he has beat me about a hundred times, <laughs> and and it's uh like I don't even like to talk about it. It's like when somebody beats you uh, out of a uh, hundred, uh, maybe he was in a bad day, maybe not. But uh, I'll tell my story. Um, that day I felt good in the morning playing the round of 16. I played Lalo Garay and beat him pretty easy. But you know when. Sometimes you you the score you kill a guy, but you don't feel like that great. The other guy made mistakes. This time I felt like I was, like I totally dominate him. Like he was playing good, I just destroyed him. Everything was like like um, fl flowing. And then I finished my match. I, I thought I was gonna have a, a tough match against him because he was playing good. He was going tiebreaker with Landa and 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 Rocky. So I thought it was gonna be. So I beat him like 15-1 and 15-4 with, with all the people of, of Colombia in, in the back. And I, even I was surprised. So I got a chance to see uh, Kane play, and I saw a couple of rallies. That's all I needed. And I'm like, uh, he's not moving that well into the front court, or he's not uh, executing that well. Sometimes he, he does that. He does that in, in, in the first rounds, but... But uh, something felt good uh, uh, about that day. I go to the, I drive back to the hotel with Fabio and Daniel, and I told them, you know what, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat a uh, Kane. So they left. <laughs> I'm gonna, live, I'm gonna beat Kane. And actually, I made a bet with Fabio before the. the I won't say what we bet about. Uh, <laughs> but, I can guess. <laughs> but we 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 had a bet and 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 I won the bet so yeah it was uh it was one of those days that I felt like I was 
miss hitting the ball too. Like I would, one of the dives in, in the match, I, I frame it and kill it in the cross. Uh, it was like a cross court pinch. I just was trying to get to the ball. And, and that happened like four or five times in the match. Like, uh, uh, so I don't know. It was a, a nice, it was a, a nice win. I didn't feel, I didn't feel so, I, I didn't celebrate it uh, as much because I felt that, 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 that was, that was a result that I could have done many years, many times before that, you know, like many, if I, if I would have, I don't know if I, if I would have done some changes in my preparation in the last 10 years, I, it would have been a, a lot more uh, wins. So I was like, kind of like, oh, I know, I, it was a confirmation that I, I could have done better instead of feeling like really happy about it. I don't know if, you, if that I- makes, if That you makes total to, sense, Alvaro. You know? and, the good news is you probably have another 10 years of playing against them. So, so you're, so you have plenty of opportunity. Hey, hey, John, I don't know if that's good news. <laughs> it's good news for racquetball. I mean, that's, I'm, I, I say that in joking, but I'm not because, you know, it comes down to your health. It comes down to your physical abilities as you get into your mid forties and fifties. And we're talking, we're talking, we're having that conversation with Rocky too, when we had him on and uh, you know, the possibilities are there and why I say never, when it's a possibility yeah. at this point, oh. one of the questions out there that, that that's getting asked is, you know, for you to describe your game style, how does Alvaro describe Alvaro's game style? Cause it's tough for other people to describe it. Okay. Uh, my game style. It's uh, you don't know what to expect. <laughs> yeah. I, I know mean, what to expect. You know what? You know what? Um, I watch so many other sports and I try to pick up things from every sport, like, like, like basketball. You see a team where all the guys are old. They play like a, a slow game against the kids. They, uh, they, they pass the ball, they dribble, they make it boring. And then the, the, you have the, the, uh, 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 young guys or a uh, fast team and you make it fast you try to make it so it's the same thing in racquetball I think I'm I'm a chameleon that's what uh, that's what uh, I, I change it I play to the whoever I'm in front of if I have to be uh, aggressive because that that's the style that's gonna help me I'll I'll play aggressive if I have to make it uh, slow and boring I'll make it slow and boring. Um, I adapt to the situation. I think that, that that's that's what would uh, um, like you said uh, that would that would be my my game style. I'm not a I I could do either 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 way. Um, Alvi Alvi, so you know we've played against each other many times. We played singles. We played recently right. doubles, and you know I'm the first to put my hand up and go. You know, you might be the greatest right side doubles player of all time, along with my partner, Tim Doyle. You know, yes. you guys are, you know, and everybody sees you as, you know, when they see you, they know you're a great player. But then when they start talking about the greatest of all time, they're like, Alvaro is one of the greatest doubles players of all time. What makes you so good in doubles? Like, what's the approach? And if you can give me any pointers right now, I'll take them. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that. Because there's we a might, chance that you're going to play me and Alex soon. We, we, might see, we might see each other. Hopefully. 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 Um, that's right. Yes. Um, what makes a, a, a good doubles player? You. 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 I don't care about everybody well, else. Okay. I want to know you. Well, you, you, you don't get in love with any shot. You are... Uh, you you gotta use the whole core. You gotta. I think that my hands helped me too. That yeah. that was one that that's one thing that I can't teach. Um, I can get in. I can get really in front of the court and take take away your uh, your uh, position. Normally, people fight in the front court. I won't fight because I go really, really, um, really close to the front wall. And they won't battle me there. So I think that that's one thing that, that makes me uh, different than, than most players. But, uh, and the other thing is just, I'm not in love with any shot. Uh, 
I'll hit any shot from any angle. I play a, a I play a lot of uh, defensive in 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 um, <laughs> something that you love. <laughs> I didn't, I, I didn't even I, know I there was a feeling until we played ball. together. Yeah, I know. I love hitting ceiling balls, and uh, I don't get bored. I actually enjoy them, and and I and I love I I I love it more when the the a guy like you who hits it from forty feet in the back and rolls it out, but. Uh, yeah, I, I play percentages, um, but what makes me different, I think it's my hands in the front court. I think I can I can hit uh, any shot from from any position and what, however the ball comes. All right, well, I'm going to now school you real quick and tell you that it's not <laughs> just your hands. It's your, it's your vision, and it's also your ability to dictate pace and tempo. Yeah. And... And it's also knowing when you're playing, you know, depending on who you're playing, I'll never forget, you know, we played in the finals of the world championships. And I don't know if you remember this, but you guys were kicking our ass. It was 10 2 in the tiebreaker. You know, you knew that my shoulder was yeah. left now in Ecuador. And I'll never forget, you walked over to Daniel like a true professional. It was 10 2. I mean, you know, our daughters could have came in and probably finished yeah. at that yeah. point. And you said to Daniel, you go, this isn't over. These go. These guys know how to win. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I know you were just making sure he knew, like, let's get this over yeah. with. But it's it's your experience, it's your vision, it's your ability, and your know how to win. And you know that's what's one of the things, the many things that makes you, you know, incredible out there. But thank you, thank you. you know, no, it, it, it's not hard to say that when you have in front of Satsi Munchik and Rocky Carson. But for a kid like Daniel. We, it was important to uh, to affirm remind him. Like, yeah, you. I mean, like, you. It's not over till it's really over. Yeah, Let's I mean, it, the, the, like, the, the video's out there, but I was on the court with you, you know, and like your intensity at that moment. It was match point. It was ten two. Oh, oh and yeah. And you like you got in his face like this yeah. isn't over. <laughs> you yeah. know, and, and making sure that so. But I gotta ask this because if I don't ask this, my wife might not let me sleep in bed tonight. Talk a little bit about your lob serve. Yeah, you know, ask. <laughs> everybody's known for drive serves. Everybody, oh, Cliff Swain with the drive, Kane with the missile, yeah. John Ellis does this, Jason Menino with the half lob. Yeah. Tell us about Alvaro Beltrans. We've spoke about this, and I love it. I love how you explained it to me. So try to really get into, you know, what's your mentality? What are you trying to do in singles and doubles on your lob serve? you know, to the right side or to the forehand side, depending on who you're playing. Like, what, what's your approach on that? Well, first, you, you have to get in the mind of, of the guy you're playing. You got to see him if he's going to cut the ball or trying to uh, be uh, hit it from, from – uh, you can be aggressive from, from the front, like you, you can cut it, or you can be aggressive from the back. So uh, you got to see what he's thinking. You got to read his, uh, his uh, body – language and i start from there from then i'll go like if he wants to cut it i'll just go to uh, go to uh, just past the, the short line or i'll make it all the way you it's a mind game is i tell everyone is that my serve that it's a wallpaper if it is i change the angle i change the altitude i change the 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 angle of the racket not only the height you change the angle and and the the ball changes uh uh in a different position like if the when when you hit it in an angle it, it will change every time obviously you, some players they're better hitting the ball off the the sidewall like close to the sidewall and some are better hitting a, a, like um uh, apart from the sidewall, so I think that's what uh, that's what made my 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 love serve good. It's not the love service; it's what I'm doing during. Like some some guys are really good on cutting the ball, so I'll I'll hit a love serve way back, so the ball will come off the back the the back wall, and that's a setup for everyone. But everybody tries to kill it. 
So I'll be there waiting for your kill down the line, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Your, your adjustments that you make on the lobster are, are incredible. They have been the whole time. You know, one thing I think about all the time with you is no matter what court you're on, you seem to have it dialed in. So when you get to, cause every court's a little different, you know, there's some yeah. slanted slanted courts that it's going to come to the middle slightly, or maybe the same location will hit off the side wall. Cause it pushes it right. Just low. Do you get used to the court with the lob serve prior to your first match? Generally? Yes. yes. I, I, I remember everyone used to give me a hard time because I always went tiebreaker with uh, not <laughs> really good players. But uh, what I was actually doing is was getting uh, used to the court, to the balance. I didn't do it with guys that I knew I was going to have a, like, like really good players. I would beat them easy. But if I, if, if I, if I had an a easy round, it was all about just adjusting to the court and, and the bounce. That, that was, that's what I was doing in my first round all the time. But, um, so, yeah. I, so Sudzy, you know, you know, I know we're getting deep into this here, but I typed up uh, something called 10 quickies for Alvi. All right. And these are 10 <laughs> questions that should be a little bit quicker of an answer for him. Uh, but if you, if you want to elaborate on any of these, no, no, no comment, no comment. Uh, <laughs> yeah. God, so, let me tell you, I'm not that fast. <laughs> Especially if you refilled that right there, it could, it could get a little slower and that's fine. I, I personally, I'm in Cali, we're in Cali. So we have all the time in the world. These guys in the, in the central standard zone, who cares what, what they've hey, got going on the rest hey, of the night. Can, have... can I interrupt you guys? Alvi, did you download my app yet? <laughs> Oh, that was quick. Alvi, did you download the app? You have it. I will today, and I will share it to everyone. You had it. Oh, you cool. had it before everybody. What hey. do you mean? You can download yes. it? You, you told me not to today no. in the morning. You could download it. I said, don't spread it out to everybody yet. Well, now it's open. Okay, okay cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome, man. It's awesome. Uh, I, I will. All right. Before, Alvi, and before we get into the 10 questions, I had one more that I really wanted to ask. And I think Alvaro will appreciate it because, you know, I, I've never been to Tijuana for racquetball. I've only been there one time with Jason Menino and a buddy of mine, and we were going a little <laughs> bit nuts having fun. And I won't bring that up any more than that. But what I wanted to say is, you know, tell, tell, the, play, tell the people of the United States who've never been to this, to that area, you know, what's going on for Tijuana and the club situation there? Because I know it's grown substantially since you came into the scene. And will we ever see some Camp Alvaro's in TJ? Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, that's that, that. Those are one of my future plans. Hopefully, I, I get to execute that. Uh, I I want to uh, like I, like we said. I, I want to keep growing the sport, and and uh, and that's one one uh, one way to one tool to do it. So definitely, I, I will do that. Um, but uh, to the people. Uh, we had a pro stop uh, years ago in a really nice club, Rio, uh, really close to the border, and and it was awesome. Right now, the, the that club is closed, but uh, hopefully in the future uh, we we get to. Uh, I, that's one thing I, I would like to have a pro stop in the in the future. Um, so uh, anybody can uh, can uh, can come to the to uh, Tijuana and. I'll, I'll make sure you guys are treated right. Even, even. So. Good. We'll pass out. We'll pass out your cell number on that one. Even, and, uh, even in racquetball. Even in a good time. Yeah, in Alvy, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put your cell number up on the screen now. So I no. but talk about the court situation. Like, how? What's the club name? How many courts in the club? You know, are there multiple clubs? Right in now, two? it's a, yeah, it's a private uh, club. It's a uh, Club Britannia. Right now, in, in San Diego, actually, not in Tijuana. But wow. um, when I was last year, I was in Tijuana. I was training and practicing in Club Britannia. It's a country club. Uh, you guys, uh, I'm sure you've been to one Britannia in Chihuahua or uh, somewhere else in Mexico. And um, we I have love Chihuahua, by the way. I just love Chihuahua too. Yes, yeah, I, I remember. You, you Special were, place uh, in my heart. You, you, you were a, a, a rock star. You are still <laughs> are, but you, I remember you. You had a good time. <laughs> um, well, say the least. Talking about the courts. Um, yes, there's a very nice courts, uh, Club Britannia. Um, 
where I where I was lucky and fortunate to play. Um, Club El Rio, where we had a pro stop. I don't know if you got to play there. No, I didn't. Nope. Yeah, the, they had about eight courts, all glass courts, um, and and the the wall it was glass too the, the of the building, so mm -hmm. you could see it to the street. Cool. It was yeah, it was really a nice club. So. So, okay, we're going to get in with these quickies here. And yes. so do you have the sheet? So you could join me here. I did, I did no, this email is, this to you. All, this is all you. I'm sitting back. I'm a fan of Alvaro. I'm, I'm Alvy's fan right now. I'm just watching. You go. All right. Well, next, I want you to join me in the future with these when I put in time on these specific 10 questions. I mean, there's so many I could choose from, but all right, 10 quickies for I've, everyone calls you Alvi now. Is it Alvi, A-L-V-I, A-L-V-Y, or A-L-V-I-E? Which one would you prefer? A-L-V-Y. That's the one Sudsy goes with. I'll yes. make my change because I've been going with the I-E at the end. Don't know why, oh. but now I know what to do. <laughs> no, the I-E is horrible. Hey, as long as you don't go with the, what they write at Starbucks in my cup. <laughs> Crazy. I'm, sh I'm sure they messed that up a little yeah. here and there. You, you should okay. just tell them gringo. That's yeah. No, I, I, I make up names. <laughs> I bet you do. I bet you're hilarious with that too. And one of the things about the doubles before I go on is you're a, you're a big man. Like you've got size to you that maybe people are, you know, it's a little deceptive. I don't think people realize how tall and strong and wide you are. And so, you know, you take up and command space like a Tim Doyle mm -hmm. with that reverse pinch ability, any shot making ability. So I think that's a huge factor in your doubles game as well and and also your size becomes apparent when you're having some drinks and cocktails with you <laughs> you want something he grabbed the back of my neck one time in san diego and said you're gonna take this tequila shot john <laughs> and i said you're right i am and i had no plans in doing that but then when i felt his I, hand on my neck i, don't I said know you're why, right i don't i don't know why i don't remember that yeah I, well you had a couple shots already <laughs> i prefer his size and mental uh strength and conditioning <laughs> when he's on my side in those yeah. situations. Yes. And he's, and that, like, he's like, we're good. I'm like, yes. I know we're good. John, but I'm not saying you're lying. I think you're right. Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> it was great. It was, hey, it was one of my favorite moments with you. And it was really only about five seconds. It wasn't a big yeah. deal, but it was, I just thought, I said, I'm going to remember this forever. That was hilarious right there. Because I did not want to take that shot at all. And I did. It was outside of, the, outside of uh, David Leone's club there, I, I yes, believe. And, yeah, and that, it was a great little tournament that weekend as well. So this tw number two question is going to be a little tough. If you had to choose one partner for the U.S. Open doubles final, is it Javier or DLR? Oh God! No, between those two, Sudzy, I'm not giving you, I'm not giving him a Sudzy option or a Rocky option or a Cliff yeah, option. Yeah. I'm giving him his two main partners. That's a tough question too. Hey, Alvy, well, you better you better answer it too. I'm not gonna let you live it down, bro. <laughs> so hey so for those, me. for those of you that didn't hear the question ellie just put on alvy this is a great question the hardest question ever <laughs> he gets to pick and this is number two partner, one partner for the biggest match of his life is it javier moreno or is it daniel de la rosa yes I think we I got our answer, answer that. There. I can't answer that. I think we have our answer there. You know, some <laughs> questions, Sudsy, are so damn good let's, that let's they not, just can't I, have an answer. answer that. that was a it's good so question, good. and I'm it's just so glad good. you didn't ask me that. Yes. Uh, it's so Yours good. will I, come. I can't have. Good one, John. You're, thank you. Thank you. One point for me. Uh, yes. The yes. third the, the third question we've already heard about, your favorite IRF moment, uh, winning the 2000 World Championships, yes. you've already answered your greatest win on the IRT, one one win, whether it's a finals, you've won some finals, so you have pro stops under your belt. Is it that or is it? Yeah, John, I'm sorry. The first time I beat you. <laughs> <laughs> and where was to that? To tell you the truth, that I'll tell you why. Because you were in the top four. So you were, I think, number three. You were my first win in the in the in the top. Uh, and and that made gave me the confidence that that I could I could play like that gave me the the confidence and to to my knowledge that I wasn't wrong that I could really be in the uh, be a top player in the world and 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 
and compete against Satsi, Cliff, you, Jason. To me, you, you guys four were were the where I wanted to be and and get to. So when when I got I got a I got lucky and beat you that first time. That was for me like, uh, oh man, this is this is awesome. So yeah, no and no surprise for me that you got me because you and I went back and forth. Yeah, and we, we, had, went, we had fun we matches. Like yeah, it they was were incredible. They were great matches for sure. Okay, yeah. so this one gets a little tough here, and you can put put yourself in this. Put yourself in this, okay? And don't be too yeah. humble. How would you rank the top five male Mexican players of all time? Five to one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. Before he answers, I'm going to interrupt and say he's number one, period. So let's go to two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Number two. <laughs> <laughs> you, bought, you went right along with that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for not putting me in the spot. Yes. Thank you. Deservingly so. It's a it's a no brainer right now at this stage. Yeah. We'll see Listen, where careers Alvin, we'll see where careers are in twenty years. He tries it's, to you do know this what? To it, offline all the time. You, you know what? It, it's hard because um, because there are so many guys doing good things, but to me and the level and I would put number two. These are good right questions. now. Right now, the le all time that, level now, level of play. It still has a. But it, it, this is the thing. He still has a, a way to go. But I think number two will be Daniel. Okay, number two is Daniel. Number three. Not. I mean, he'll be. I don't know if you. If I'm under, like, he still has five years to prove me that. But I think that that's the place for him. He's been. Uh, he won three gold medals in Central American Games. He won world championships already, so tournament of the Americas, and and I think uh, he'll he definitely be number two. I would put there uh, Javier because all the what he has done in doubles, he has won everything in doubles. He is for he played for so many years, and and he won with 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 everyone too, like yep. he. He won every tournament and with different partners. So I, I would put uh, Javier there. Uh, I might be forgetting people. I mean, but... there, there is a guy named Alex Lando who's pretty good nowadays. Uh, he'll, he'll be in the top five, too. But uh, Alex, it's a, it's a weird case. Landa, he didn't do good from his 20s to his 30s. He, yeah. started, play, like, he started playing good two years ago. But he's doing great. He's doing... Uh, Hall of Famer stuff, you know, yeah. but it, but Mexican? he started, he but he started, but he started, he started late. He started late. I, I mean, like in his twenties, Polo was better than him. Um, Polo's a great player. Polo's a great yeah, player. Polo, Polo, Javier, Daniel. I mean, Landa. It's a weird case because he he was uh, he was good, but he he wasn't. He, he wasn't winning tournaments or making the national team till now. And he become really, he became really good. So it's a, but he, I'll definitely put him in the, in the top five with uh, Gilberto Mejia. Gilberto Mejia, I think he, he deserves that. He, uh, he, he, he was in the team for about, for 10 years or, or more in the Mexican team. And you know how hard it is to be, to qualify in the, Mexican national team because we played doubles and singles in in, in four Same days. Event. Yeah. So he was doing that for we did that for more than ten years. Gilberto, Javier, and, and me. So I I would he won also like six national championships. So uh, six or seven. So I would put uh, Gilberto wow. and and, La and Alex Landa. Those would be my top five. And those and and those are a great five and yeah. And a, I mean, and, you, you, you can go a lot wrong. of different directions with younger players, but they've got to prove it here as they get into their careers, yes. as they yes. age for sure. So, okay, a little quicker this one on the women's side, but one through five on the women's side. Obviously, Paola's one. Paola's one. I would say uh, some, there's a lot of good. Samantha Salas, too. The, Samantha's there. Susia Costa is there. Um, Rosie Torres is mm -hmm. there. From our era, Rosie's from, from our era, era, from the same era as myself. But the first gold medal is in, right. uh, in doubles uh, in Panam Games. 
Mm -hmm. So Rosie and Lupita Torres. I think Lupita Torres, she, uh, she was a national champion as well many times. So uh, I think that would be the, the, the top five women. I, I might be forgetting people. But I, I forgot what I had for breakfast too. So yeah, no Don't problem. This is a quick question. They're supposed to be quickie. So okay. this one's an interesting one. Does your Virginia IRT victory count or not? And you know how I feel about it, but Sudsy might not feel the same way. So does it count yes. for you? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I, I'll tell you why. Yes, please do. I, I first of all, I'm from Tijuana, and I'm I'm uh, used to the wet with a side ball. <laughs> <laughs> but I would have won anyway. Yes, it was your tournament. It was <laughs> destined. That was my tournament to win. Actually played Kane in the quarters or his dad was there and he said like, hey, we're going to bet for a cage of beer. He still owes me a cage of beer. He's like, <laughs> so I beat him for a cage of beer there, but we play a, 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 a one game. I beat him and then the you know how it happened the turn I, I was pissed about it i want like i felt good about in the finals i jack and i was no, normal match no, to, normal match no yeah no uh bad i agree no i mean it was just a, like a tough it was a hard, five game final right, that i i was a line game, judge exactly. for it so and, I, I actually stuck the, around and the titles were all right everything was all right so for me it counts Obviously, it didn't count, but um, yeah, I got, I still got a, a bonus from me for, so I don't care. That's what I'm talking about. So there's extra things that people don't realize that came into play money wise that did speak to it counting there. And for mm -hmm. those that are on the show listening, don't know what we're talking about. In Virginia, uh, you know, we we had the first day was really wet. The second day was, I think, a little bit wet. By the time the finals were on, and it was you versus yeah. Jack, it was a dry court and it was a great match. It was a classic yeah. five game match. And yeah. now. We didn't share, we shared ranking points. We shared money yes. in that one, but you got the bonus and you That's got your it. first pro win on that one, whether people care or not, it's what you think yeah. on that one. All right. Yeah. And you kind of answered this qu next question. We're on number eight here. Will we ever see you be a coach of team Mexico? If I would ever be, uh, my daughter interrupt me right now. It's okay. We, hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hola. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, that's something that that would interest me. Uh, I'll be interested and in, and passionate about. We look forward yeah, to that for sure. That'll be yeah. so cool to see you pass yeah. it on and become become a coach later on. Whether it's ten years, five years, twenty yeah. years, we'll see. Okay, that's question funny. number nine. Hold what on, is hold your on. Ellie? 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 Sorry, just going to interrupt you. I like this, but we got to definitely keep it moving. So, for those of you that don't know, Alvi texted me right before he came on. And he broke his phone today, so that's why. Yes. Sorry. That's why yes. the screen looks like that. Um, you know, it's, it's it's not. There's no lighting issue, I guess. Yeah. It's on the screen. You can tell me. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right on the cam camera today before playing pickleball. Sorry, guys. No problem. What is your favorite city to play in in Mexico, the United States, and then outside of those two countries? Um. My favorite place any, anywhere in Mexico, first of all. Anywhere okay. in Mexico, I love playing in front of uh, my people. And uh, after that, I would say uh, Virginia and Atlanta. Virginia and Atlanta, interesting. Two I would yeah. not have thought of, Suds. Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't have thought of those either. Uh, I want to post up there. Yes, <laughs> and that makes it more, hey. That, that obviously brings more love to that city. Uh, yeah. When you're like Sudsy and you win a whole shitload of them, then you love every city that you're at and you become We Are Rackable. <laughs> but for us who won a, a modest amount of events, you start to fall in love with those cities for sure. What about yeah. outside of Mexico and the United okay. States? Uh, I, I love playing in Costa Rica. Yeah. Uh, really? Uh, really, Edmundo? You got to throw uh, that one at me? <laughs> I love playing there, man. So, to me it's a vacation a paid vacation absolutely the it's, the the courts the people the weather the food uh, the food everything is incredible else. it's top 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 of uh of the notch yeah Ellie, I, don't, yeah. I don't know if you know this but not only did alvaro and i compete at the highest level in the world championship finals <laughs> in Costa Rica, we were also there together 
for a more Absolutely. fun event. And yes. uh, I, I can tell you that Al, Alvy can perform if he has a beverage. <laughs> oh, John, let me tell you a story. So, uh, <laughs> Wait, Alvy, can you do me a favor? Can you just, because Scotty Mack in the background, he thinks if you wipe your screen a little bit, it might help. I'll start bleeding. My finger will start bleeding. Oh, the glasses. I, I, I got that's a, yeah, sorry, sorry. No um, John, um, tell, uh, just to reinforce your uh, what you said about me in National City, well, this time, uh, Santi <laughs> was drinking tequila after the match. So he goes to me and he's like, hey, here, you got to drink a couple of shots with me. So we drank the whole bottle. Wait of a minute. You didn't set it up good, Edmano. This is the world championships. Oh, this, yeah, was yeah. At, this is at the end of the world championships. He's telling yeah, me. Uh, Fun parties, I'm sure. Yes. I don't know how it was a miracle, but he couldn't like hold his shoulder in during the match at the end. But once we, we started drinking tequila, he was pretty shoulder good. Was fine. <laughs> he was <laughs> he was doing a lot better. I'm sure yeah. that was a lot of fun. I'm I sure almost, that party that night was great. Oh, yeah. I almost convinced him to stay for a, for another day. You did. I almost, you, I you, almost did. <laughs> another day would have been about five or yeah. six more days potentially. So that might have been a good move to get <laughs> yeah. out of there because it's it happens quickly. Okay, yeah. so this is my last question here. Uh, if you never played pro racquetball in your life, what would you have done as you got older to make a living? You know, what would what would you have done? What do you think you would have become? Uh, no well, idea. Boxer. Could have. Uh, Maybe. Where were your passions besides player. racquetball? Baseball player. Baseball player. I think I would have been good at it. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Yeah. Ba would've. Baseball player. <laughs> Interesting. I would have been for that. So did yeah, you grow up playing that. baseball? Did you grow up playing a little baseball? Think, no, that's the, that's the <laughs> problem. <laughs> but uh, you know what? After I won the Panam Games uh, when I, I was 28, 29, I was invited um, to uh, work out with the, the pro team from Tijuana, mm. uh, the Toros de Tijuana. Mm -hmm. and, and I did the workout with all the players. I, I was, um, they, they uh, speed me, uh, speed gun. No, yeah, radar, radar gun, radar gun. Yeah, I was doing, without a uh, warm, I, I was doing uh, 91, 90. What? Yes. Wow, with, that's crazy. Uh, you never told like, me that, bro. I, I was like, yeah, 80, and, and never threw a, a, like a, a baseball like that before that. And, and that guy's like, can I say bad words? Yeah. yeah He's man. like, you're, you're fucking lying, he told me, the coach. <laughs> you, you play... You you played baseball when you were young. I'm like never played baseball. He said the the hardest thing to teach to a pitcher is the wrist. Mm -hmm. So I guess you I added a, a few miles with the with the wrist. I even hit a home run too. And wow! So That's and wild. I was I was in, in the in the stadium. So I think I, I would have I could have done that. You never know, but it's hard, it's hard. There, there's no doubt, Alvy, I say it all the time that like the greatest racquetball players in the world, you know, yeah. a lot of us are really good athletes at everything. You know, a lot yeah. of people don't know, like, you know, John was an amazing basketball player, an amazing soccer player. You know, yeah. we, we, the top yeah. level guys could have competed. There's no yeah. doubt, you know, and, yeah. and I joked, I said a boxer, but yeah. there's no, no doubt. Sure. Yeah. I think you could have been a world, you know, a professional boxer. I think, you know, we, we talk offline and I'm like, are you number one yet in pickleball? Like, there's no <laughs> doubt that yeah. if that's what you want to do. And by the way, Scotty Mack just messaged and he said, you got a technical for the, uh, for the bad line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're going to get a fine. They're going to send it to you. And, uh, they're going to present it to you. So listen, <laughs> Alvy, we could keep going on and on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know, like Ellie and I, we don't want to stop this. We want to keep going because it's just fun. You know, we enjoy hanging out and, and doing this, but we got to think about the people at home and right. they, they got to go too. Right. Um, I'm going to text you about a hundred times as soon as we're over, you know, we'll talk about yeah. things, but you know, is it, is there anything you want to say, you know, and, and if you want to say it in Spanish, you know, just to your fans, there's a lot of people watching, you know, anything, yeah. Wrong, you know? Yeah. Well, I just want to say to all the people watching and or the ones that will watch later, support the sport. 
buy racquetball stuff, buy Sapsi stuff, buy gearbox stuff, buy, but like you, you don't, you don't know how much you make a difference when you support the sport that, that we all love. And uh, teach a kid how to play racquetball, teach a family member, do you, you, your own part. I mean, make the effort, but execute what we have and, uh, and the love we have for the sport. That's all I can say. Do you want, right. do you want to say that? You want to say that in Spanish real quick, just cause there's, go ahead. They all understand, they all understand. Okay. All right. Did you, people don't know, I'm your English teacher, you're my Spanish yeah. teacher. <laughs> yes. Hey, don't say that because you'll you'll look bad. Once they, <laughs> they hear me. <laughs> Alvi, you know, um, I love you, brother. You're you're you know, we're not just competitors. You know, our relationship off the court is way more important than what we do on the court. So yes. uh, I just want to say thank, thank you. you, thank you for who you are and what you've done for racquetball, not only in Mexico but for Latinos. You know, I told you, my wife said that like Alvi is the biggest name, you know, in, 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 yes. in the Latino world. And she's been doing it since. Yes. She's only like a year or two younger than us. But still. <laughs> yeah, for you know? sure, for sure. Yeah. Yes, no, thank you, man. It really means something for me coming, those words coming from you, because I have so much respect. I admire you for the career you, you made in racquetball. Uh, to me, you're a rock star, as well as, as John. Uh, to me, you guys are in the, in the, my favorite players to watch and to, and to, uh, I enjoy so much watching you guys play. It was fun for me. You guys made it so much fun as a fan. So I appreciate your words, man. Thank you. Same, same to you. Same to you, Alvaro. Same to you, buddy. Thank All you. That. Thank you. I, I love the, 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 the style you guys brought to the, to the, to the game. It was incredible. So it, it was nice competing against you. It, I mean, we, I was in a special era with you guys. Yeah. Uh, I played in a special era, so I appreciate it and and I admire so much both of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. same to you, same to you. We feel we feel the same, Alvy. We're gonna let you go. Ellie and I are okay. gonna stick around. I don't know why thank he has that hat, and I don't have that hat. I'm a little jealous, but <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you, Alvy. We'll talk. We'll talk soon, Alvy. Thanks, buddy. See you guys later. Bye. Scotty Mac. So Ellie, you know, I mean, Alvy's a good friend, you know, we've known him forever. And he really is to me, he, he really is. When I think of like racquetball outside of the United States, he's like the first guy that I think of, you know, and we've competed against him. And he's also one of the most vicious competitors we've ever played. You know, Doug Gannam said to us, I believe, he said a lot of people don't know how tough he is yeah. because he's such a good guy. Like that's his personality. But what makes him such a great player on the court as well is, is his ability to go compete and know his opponent, know himself, and then do what he needs to do to win that match. Yeah, absolutely. On the court, off the court too. You and I, you know, you know, he's a tough ass dude off the court. If you mess with him, if you're, if you're a guy who wants to get in some action and you mess with, him, you're messing with the wrong guy. And uh, we know that about him. And that stuff matters when it comes to competing in a professional manner and, and, and athletics and especially a one-on-one -on -one sport like racquetball where you're right next to each other on the court. You know, physical play is a part of the, of the, of the sport. And so uh, Alvaro might seem like the nicest guy in the world off the court, a lot of fun to hang with, a lot of fun to have a couple of drinks with, a lot of fun to practice with and train with. But, you know, make no mistake about it. He's one of the most vicious guys that I've seen and known on tour. And he'll you know, he'll throw down with anybody who's doing him wrong or doing his friends wrong. Yeah, I've, I've been with him in many, many circumstances off the court where, it, you know, he was the first one, you know, to be there and have your back and support you. And, and that's well said. Scotty Mack, you know, you, you ref Alvaro all the time. Like, what's your take on him and his, his game style and, you know, the way you see him as a player, you know, on the court? And I know you spend some time with these guys off the court a little bit. You know, but what's your impression of Alvaro and, and, you know, what his mark is in history? Yeah, I, I, I watch him a lot because, like, I, I ref him a, a, a lot. And uh, I, I think he's got kind of a, a very mature style. He's got a very, like, mental forward style. Like, he's got, like, uh, that's why I was so interested to see the, the answers to the questions here. 
uh, on the stream but yeah he's got like a, a very control style he's like he he wants you to attack what it, what he's doing mm -hmm. uh i think that's that's like a unique thing you don't see that a lot with the younger players like it's not like yeah all right i'm just gonna like set you up let's see what you do with it uh i think he, he's like one of the, the responses on here like he knows all the responses he knows what you can do with it so he's, he's ready for like all the like possible options uh, I, I thought that was like a uh, like a, a great mark of maturity. Uh, I, like, that's something I, I respect about about Alvaro's game is he's he's got a lot of a lot of experience just fielding a lot of different different shots with it with the serve. So the, I mean he's literally one of the greatest players, not only one of the greatest players of all time, but one of the greatest control players of all time is what I put him in there. And what what Scott's talking about there about you know he wants you to go after it and get really aggressive with your offense so that he can counter punch you. You know, Jason Menino is probably the best in my mind at that of all time of just counter punching on a consistent basis instead of looking for his offense early. I mean, don't get me wrong. Alvaro can splat roll and go on, go on fire for a little while on, from both sides. But he does take a unique approach with a slower service strategy. Um, and then from there, pounces on you in the rallies when you start to make mistakes by trying to get greedy or be too aggressive with them. Having said that, it's hard to just ceiling ball rally with him because he will let one drop off the back wall and do what you did at such a high level, which is splat roll a backhand. It might not be as vicious as yours with, you know, pace about 50 to 60 miles an hour less than yours. Um, you know, and it might not be down from the low, uh, low plane that you got down by bending your legs. He might be more pendulum swinging that, but he rolls it. And his skill set is just incredible. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I think he touched on it, right? Like if you want to think about Alvaro as a player, sometimes it's simple. You find those little pinpoint things and like, you know, think about what he said with his lob serve, right? Or what Scotty just said, observing him when he refs him. Alvaro's biggest strength is he has an ability to force you into the game that he wants you to play. And, you know, even for some of the greatest of all time, you know, those players, they're going to play their game, period. And they're going to bring it. And if you can hang, you can hang. If you can't, you know, you're going home, just like most. But Alvaro says, okay, these are my abilities. I'm going to force you to play the way I want you to play in that moment. And, and that's just to have those skill sets, that ability, the mental fortitude and strength, you know, kind of like Jason, right? Like, you know, Cliff once said, he goes, Jason's the kind of player where you might be able to go out and kick his ass. You know, it's not going to be easy, but he's also going to force you to play well. And that's what Alvi does every time. You know, I've played Alvi a bunch of times and it's, you know, I can give you a list of amazing players that I could tell you, ah, it was easy. I never felt pressure. It was, you know, and they're great players with incredible resumes, but with Alvi, it was like a different type of pressure. And I think it was that, I think it was that he forced me to play a way he wanted me to play. And, you know, he was really effective, but I can't say enough for what I think he's done from a perception standpoint for racquetball you know, south of the border, really, right? Like, so United States and below, here we are in Ecuador and, and Veronica, the impression Alvaro had on Veronica, you know, is that he is the biggest name in the Latino community. Um, you know, Paola may now be the most famous based right. on, you know, her career, her, you know, social media today, but for racquetball, and that's what we're talking about, you know, the impact he made, maybe Paola, maybe Alvaro had an impact on Paola's existence in racquetball. You know, no doubt I, about that. Yeah, I, I, I would believe that that's true. So, you know, I think that was a great show. I think uh, having Alvy was awesome. Scotty Mack, you know, it, it's always great having you. Is there a way we can play the, the amazing, you know, commercial that Veronica put together one more time for everybody? Totally. Yeah, all ready for it. Yeah, just throw that up and then we'll come back and say goodnight. All right.
so prepared. All right, so there you have it. You know, that's we're coming to an end here tonight. That's the app, and, and my wife deserves all the credit for putting together that little trailer. Hope you like it. Had a little gladiator feel, a little brave heart. Uh, you know, but at the end of the day, download the app. You know, it's on Google and it's on Google, it's on the Apple App Store. It's free to download, and then it's your decision what you want to do from there. So, Ellie, any final thoughts? Yeah, you know, this is our sixth show, and we had Alvaro Beltran on, so that just speaks to his importance in racquetball and how we feel about him i thought it was a great show for me personally you know as somebody who's half half mexican you know i'm you know i don't talk about this kind of stuff much but i'm in the stockton mexican athletic hall of fame so that for me you know the pride that i have in being a mexican person uh is real there was a time where i thought maybe i would possibly play for team mexico and it happened right before i made the team USA. So I didn't, you know, when I first made team USA, I didn't expect that to happen at that moment. And my mind was kind of, you know, can I go play for Mexico since I have great grandparents that were born there and I probably could have, but you know, a lot of pride for watching the country develop its racquetball program. I played against Maldonado as you did. I, I really, really liked uh, Juan Hippie Corvado. He's one of my favorite guys. The Martin brothers were just awesome people. So I saw the struggles early and we did Sudsy together on the team. We saw the struggles of Team Mexico, but we saw them having a great time, loving the sport. We got to travel together to places like Chihuahua, San Luis Potosi, see the love for the sport there. And so it was inevitable that was going to happen. And it's just so, uh, it's such a great representation for, for Mexican racquetball to have Alvaro be the first one to really break through. And uh, I'm just really proud of him. I'm proud to have competed against him. Uh, win and lot wins and losses were tough against him. And uh, he's just one of the great players. So I'm glad that we chose him and I look forward to our future shows. Yeah, you know, speaking on the future shows, we decided, the three of us today, for Beyond the Court, that, you know, we, we line up these the guests, but we're going to not release them until Sunday. So everybody has a whole week to, you know, if they want any input. I see some people commenting on who they'd like to see. Uh, who we will have next, we will show you on Sunday, the day of the show. You know, we hope you enjoy it. We hope you come out and, on a Sunday night you know, and you have a glass of wine or a glass of water or a cup of coffee, whatever it is you want to do, you know, but what we want to do is promote racquetball. We want to do it together. You know, we want to bring energy and positive excitement to it and interest. Tomorrow night, Monday night, the IRT is going to have Kane on. They're going to be talking about outdoor racquetball. Tune in, make sure you watch that. You know, this is no competition. We're here to spread the love of racquetball. If we could expose players, we're going to expose them even further. If there's, you know, interesting stories or, or things we need to discuss, we want to do that. So don't be afraid to tell us, you know, and, and we're here for you just as much. You know, like I said in the beginning, you know, we're a racquetball family. And if we all have the same intentions and we all have good, you know, good interests, uh, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to get through this and we're going to come out strong. So, you know, and if you go download the app for free, you'll see too, that it's, you know, there's coaches on there, there's clothing stores, there's every player you can imagine, go check it out. It's for free, download it. I hope you love it. And, uh, as always from Scotty Mac, Ellie and I, thank you so much for being part of beyond the court. This was episode six, episode seven. We're not going to tell you who the guests are yet, but I promise it's going to matter. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you soon.